Good morning and um, welcome back to Veggie Plot. Uh, it's going to be a little busy morning today. I brought up some French beans which I had at home. I planted these about a week, week and a half ago perhaps. Uh, I've got a couple of, well, four spaces on the bean bed which I uh, want to fill. I'm just going to take the largest, just as always, and uh, the healthiest ones, just pop them up from the bottom and slide, the, slide them out. Roots look quite good, don't they, today? On these they've grown on a bit since the last time when i planted these out they were quite yellow i don't know if you remember so yeah i just want to get these holes all finished all right let's go and get a watering can which i filled up a minute ago you've seen this vine how long this is now it's right the way down to um the artichoke here it was i'd say nearly getting on for 20 feet long now that vine and then get these babies in here. I'm really pleased with how they've uh, shot up and, and greened up. So I have hopes that we'll get some crop out of them. Right, last one for here. Some of these onions are obviously collapsing and I think, you know, these are, can come out, but some didn't do all that well at all. So I'm going to take out the ones that are collapsed, take them home to dry, and then I'm going to fill in these spaces with the remaining French beans. These are Sturon, and they were left down by the gate for the allotments, uh, just in a bag. Some had obviously used all they wanted and they were just free, so there's no money wasted, but they went in a bit late and as a result, <laughs> haven't really done much. Shame really, I thought they would get a bit bigger, these ones that have collapsed. There you go. It's all usable, isn't it? It's all usable. Right, I thought we'd just uh, have a quick look up at the pumpkins and runner beans, see how they're doing because uh, obviously I left them here last week, their own devices, but oh wow, look at that. That's got so much bigger. That's uh, definitely a pumpkin. And this one, I'm still not convinced. It looks like a marrow, doesn't it? It's such a sort of a marrowy shape. Doesn't look very pumpkin-like. Anyway, so they're doing okay. Runner beans, uh, these are the uh, scarlet. Look at them, perfect. I uh, love these, yeah. Get them before they get too big. That's always my motto. You don't, I don't like big, long, thick runner beans. It's a complete waste of time, I think. But yeah, look at them, lovely. I don't mean they're a waste of time. Everybody to their own, doesn't it? But I like them when they're young and tender and, and not, not full of bean and, you know, and all heavy. So I quite like them when they're this sort of size. This is, this is about perfect, really. And I think the sooner you pick them, the more, the more you'll get. Look at that lovely bunch. Do you call them a bunch of beans? That's probably another word for it, I expect. Oh, and here. Oh, golly, I didn't expect this many. That's the thing with runners, isn't it? They're a bit like courgettes. If you go away and leave them, and you come back, they're all, all over the place and get enormous. There's some. Take that one. I think that's it for the moment. Yeah, not bad though. Let's put these in the basket with the onions, shall we? Oh. Yeah, right. Anyway, butternut, not butternut, the Australian butters, look, they've got huge now. It's almost doubled in size. And this one, beautiful. This weekend we've got the annual flower show and veg show uh, where I live. So I've got to try and save some things for that. So I've entered in some categories. Uh, I don't know if I'll put it in any of the videos. I might put some more pictures in, um, but yeah. So I've got to save some stuff like beetroots and courgettes and things for that. Uh, the, there isn't a huge amount here. So all the broad beans are gone, the peas have gone, turnips have gone. So there are only a few things I can enter this year. So I think it's on Saturday, so I'm going to take this one off here. 
that gives me three of those, aren't they beautiful? Three of them. I'm going to leave them just to mature up a bit maybe for Saturday. Oh, this one's got a good one. That's lovely. Put that one there. One I missed. Right. Let's see if we can just cut that off. Yeah, oops. That one got a bit big. That's a shame. Anyway, I think we've got a few more like that. Right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, let's get the basket and we'll put them in. Actually, this basket's not going to be big enough, is it? <laughs> it's not going to be big enough at all. Right. One. Now, two. This last one. That's ten courgettes, which were all a bit too big. <laughs> oh dear, that wasn't the plan. I'm going to get the netting out of the shed uh, and get that all cut to size now. Uh, as before, I think I'll put it on fast forward because you don't need to see me doing that again. Uh, if you do, then please check back a couple of few videos. Uh, yeah, and then we'll get these cabbages and get the leeks in. Let's get started. Right, that's got the netting all cut and ready and weighed down on the other edge so it's ready just to stretch over so just go and get the cabbages and leeks and we can make a start yeah they look okay they're nothing compared to the ones that are actually in the ground but yeah oh underneath <laughs> oh that's the thing about gardening isn't it? you've got to stay flexible <laughs> or it helps you stay flexible i should say i'm just going to get the rake to level off that little area there it's just a bit of a mound this rake actually is a old sort of family thing it's a, my mum's old garden rake she didn't want anymore does the job though it's quite unusual compared to the new rakes it's just like a load of old nails bang through it you know and slightly curved <laughs> i don't know how old it is ancient i should think Nice to keep using these old things. There we are. Right, let's put that down there. Right, let's get the trowel. I keep minding my head on this, uh, on these uh, bamboo canes. It's a bit like doing, I don't think I can do it that way. <laughs> I don't think I'd make that anymore. Maybe, maybe 20 years ago, not at the moment. So anyway, I'm just gonna dig holes as before and going to bury them quite deep. Um, because they've got a little bit of stem whoop, on them. I don't know if you can see that. I'll bring you in closer in a minute, but there's quite a bit of stem, so I'm going to bury them a bit deep so they've got uh, plenty of support. Those six dug, as you can see, yeah, they've got a bit of stem on them, so yeah, I shall bury them up to about here, just to give them a bit of support. I really do like, feel like a bit of a limbo dancer under here. <laughs> right, let's just get these out. Yeah, roots are okay, not too bad. I shall bury this one quite deep. Just pull it in and firm it in. I think all brassicas like to be quite firm in the ground. That's all of those in, which is nice because they've been sitting around for weeks and weeks and weeks. <laughs> you can see how the little, making a little dent around them helps collect the water. All right, just throw this over here. Great, job done. Which is nice. 
so that's another one done. Okay, let's get on and uh, sort this bed out. That's got that cleared. These are the onions. I've got, I've got some used onions here. I didn't think uh, these would really come to anything. I thought they would just all go to seed, but yeah, they'd be, they'd be usable. I mean, I have to use them pretty quick, but I've got some water, dibber, <laughs> and leeks. I'm just going to do what I did last time. Right, and they start coming apart quite easily. I'll just drop them straight back in the water. The uh, leeks all separated, absolutely every single one. Let's put them back in there for the minute. But what I wanted to show you was what some people do, and which I haven't bothered with doing before, is you can snip the tips off and shorten the roots. And basically that helps with planting but I think also encourages the plant to uh, root more. I'm not 100% sure. Again, I've never found it a problem just doing it the other way, but this is another way of doing it. I'll go through and I'll snip all these off. I'm going to put these... Uh, trimmed leeks in first. I'll just put them in and then I'm just going to water them in and I think oh, the soil will collapse in around them and hopefully, yeah, I'll just have to hold them up so that they settle in upright. I've never planted them as such big holes. Definitely much easier to plant when you trim them and you've got a really big uh, dibbed hole as it were. <laughs> Yeah, just knocking a bit of soil in just to give them something to sit upright in and I'll just prop them upright and give them a little bit of a tweak so that they're sitting perfectly. So it's all a bit new to me trimming these leeks. I can see why people do it. It's neat and easy if that appeals. So I've got the tray here just going to be same as before. You never know dearly till you try. I think that's the thing about gardening and allotmenting. There are no hard, fast rules. You do what you like. It's up to you. And uh, I don't think it's any right for anyone to judge us actually and uh, tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing. So that's a whole row up to up to here, another 10, so that's all, all looking good. Anyway, I was just going to show you those leeks, wasn't I? The ones we put in the other day, just to uh, show you how long, it doesn't take long for them actually to, uh, to get going. There you go, look, I only put these in last week and they're already doubled in size. As always, thank you very much for uh, joining me in this video and I hope to see you in the next video, which I'm not sure what it'll be to be honest. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, that's all for now. See you soon. Bye for now.